What to do, homies? We are here with some death battle. This time we are checking out Joker versus Giorno from Bizarre Adventure. Now, I've seen, I think, seasons one through three for JoJo's, and I have played a Persona 5, which I know Joker is from, but both of them at a, a battle in each other. I can't wait to see how this plays out. I got my money on Joker. Let's go ahead and shut up and turn it up. By Marvel Snap. Joker versus Giorno. The Phantom. Oh, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, personas, avatars of themselves versus. Okay. I didn't even. Okay. All right. Steve of Hearts I get it. and JoJo's Golden Gangstar. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Ren Amamiya wasn't prepared for this to happen. When he witnessed an innocent woman being harassed and stepped in, he had no idea her assailant was one of Japan's most prominent politicians. Amazing. Poor Ren was forced to leave town, lose friends, and transfer to Shujin Academy. There's definitely more fun ways to ruin your life. But his run-ins with... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Spent 10 years in spinoff hell. God, it's been a minute since I played Persona 5, like... A lot. I mean, I played it for like a bunch of months, maybe even a year when it first came out, and I have not touched it since. What is this? Spent 10 years in spinoff hell. Let me know. Corrupt authority figures was only just beginning. One might call it a theme. And it wouldn't just be dealing with your garden variety scumbag gym teachers. Ren and his new friends found themselves in a whole new world. The Metaverse! Oh, that's scary. Yeah, that one. Derived from the works of Carl Jung, this collective unconscious is like an alternate reality formed from the amalgamated thoughts and feelings of mankind. What humans believe, or even what they fear, directly shapes it. And inside this crazy mental realm, those who have been corrupted by power and abused the weak have become evil superpowers, just like how they're viewed by many of their victims in the real world. Victims like Ren and his friends, Ryuji, An, Makoto, Pancake, and the animal. They may have been helpless against crushing institutional might in the real world, but in the metaverse, they had a way to fight back. Personas. As part of the summoner's inner self, personas can become incredibly Animation powerful clean, spirits. Man. By using their personas to battle their foes in the metaverse and steal their hearts, the source of their moral corruption, Ren and company could cause such foes to repent in the real world. So Do I know something that's very interesting? Uh, when I my first Persona game was Persona Three, that was the first one I played, and you know, the type of game that it is, I would not rush to play it, right? If I looked at a review or something like that, and all the you know little micro stuff that you got to do, you know, relations and everything, it didn't seem like it was that interesting. But Persona's got somewhat they they got a certain style, certain you can call it the storytelling, the visuals, and everything that got me hooked and i i couldn't tell you how i just the music don't even get me started on the music the gameplay and all of a sudden i started caring about these little micro actions i had to do to manage my team i genuinely hate those type of games man i just want my team to manage themselves like 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 human beings <laughs> So the friends formed a band called the Phantom Thieves, with Ren as their leader, codenamed Joker. And Joker's first persona was the awesome Arsene. With razor sharp claws and the ability to curse enemies with dark energy, Arsene was an excellent persona to start with. But Joker's a wild card. Literally, he can capture as many personas as he wants. He's gotta catch them all, cause they each have their own crazy powers. From shooting fire, ice, and lightning, to dishing out status effects, healing, and resistances, to lobbing actual nukes at the baddies. So Joker can fight with manifestations of deities like Beelzebub, Odin, and Jesus Christ. Wow, he looks way different than in the paintings I've seen. Oh, wait, did you know that a persona is connected to their user's own stamina? So when a persona is shattered, even though it's not like dead dead, it does rattle the user pretty badly. Well, without his personas, Joker can still rely on his guns, grappling hooks, smoke bombs, etc. Might not sound like much compared to summoning actual Satan, but in the metaverse, perception is reality. No, really, it actually works like that. In the real world, Joker's gun is only a prop. 
However, with Joker's reputation in the metaverse, this prop becomes a god killer. As the Phantom Thieves' reputation increased, perception. so did their power, simply because that's how they were perceived. Kinda like how Personas are empowered by the social links Joker possesses with his friends. Yes, in the world of Persona, hanging out with your buds makes you stronger. Yeah, it, it's that part right there, and it kind of forces you to learn more about the story. You know how they kind of leave you no chance. They hook you in with the story, hook you even further with the gameplay, and then it gets to the point to where you got no choice, right? You just gotta pay attention to the story. And uh, by all means, and not angry at that i'm just you know it just hooked me on something that i would normally play so you know bravo to the writers anime game at their max social links can bring a wild card user back from the brink of death instilling them with willpower greater than the rest of humanity combined I guess meticulously gardening your friends like a sociopath has its benefits hey wiz have a cold one on me uh thanks Ah, looks like our relationship meter's maxed out. Oh, yeah. Well, guess there's no point to us hanging out anymore. Later, loser, I'm gonna go do untested pharmaceuticals and date my teacher. Oh. Wait, date your what? Ahem. <clears throat> Over the course of his adventures leading the Phantom Thieves, Joker's bonds made him as powerful as the gods he commands. He can dodge Lucifer's Morning Star, which summons an energy beam that travels several light years in Sephiroth, seconds, Supernova, millions of times faster right? than light. Or survive a cheeseburger that exploded big enough to eclipse a nebula. Talk about having stomach problems. I like these these little stats they put down here, right? Kind of give us a little bit more. I'd take nebula size, big banger, big bang burgers. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's quoted. Is that the name of the actual movie here? Big Bang Burgers? Survive Valentine's Day Massacre? Okay, Gilgamesh. No wonder Joker can face up against opponents that can reshape all of reality. Like Maruki, who used the metaverse to rewrite all of reality to fit his desires. Or Yaldabaoth, who merged the real world and metaverse together. It was in this battle with Yaldabaoth that Joker upgraded our sin to create Satanile the biblical angel of vengeance. With a big ass gun, perceive this reality, bitch. Its primary attack, Sinful Shell, is imbued with what is known as almighty energy, which can bypass any defense, even that from the omnipotent orb, which can explicitly rewrite reality. Yes, very good. Big ass gun with. My wife can be and daily. with a shot rewrite heard around reality. the world, Joker and his friends prove that you're never too young to change society for the better. No matter how arduous the forces against you, may be. If the man is keeping you down, just call up the Phantom Thieves to put them in their place. They'll never see it coming. Good summary. As far back as he could remember, Giorno Giovanna always wanted Giovanna, to be a gangster. Giorno. Okay, so, damn it. So, so right here, right, because I ain't caught up with this season, so the Joker, right, with Persona, I was very familiar with, with this. I have zero clue, so let's go. Feels good to be a gangster. Gone are the days of leaving horse heads in your enemy's bed or squeezing their head in a vice till they pop. Jarno wanted to be a different kind of gangster. A more progressive, metrosexual kind of mob boss. A gang star. A shy, withdrawn boy on the streets of Naples, Jarno's life changed the day he saved a wounded mobster. In return, he was rewarded with future protection from abuse and isolation. This act of reciprocal kindness convinced Jarno of the value of the mob as a social organization. If only it was commanded by the right person. Someone like Jarno, all he had to do was take control of the Neapolitan Mafia, Passione, and their army of superpowered assassins. Octopus Salad, Gangsters, Epic Piano, and then Gangsters, and then Dislikes, Drugs, Corruption, Point. It's kind of like, like, okay, all right. Biological son of Dio Brando and Jonathan Jokestar, Don't Ask. See, I know those two, Don't Ask. Oh, see, now I need some of you guys to explain that to me, because hello? Assassins, ambitious, maybe, but hey, head? he's the bastard son of the insane vampire douche lord himself, Dio Brando. Who conceived Jorno while possessing the body of his arch enemy, Jonathan Joestar. Oh. This technically makes Jorno both a Brando and a Jojo. Hence the name Jojo. Get I'm, it? I'm sorry. So he possessed and then went out and started doing the nasty. Oh, yeah, I got to catch up. I gotta catch up, okay. Well, he didn't just inherit the name, but also the Joestar bloodline's power. Giorno possesses a stand, 
gold experience. Stands are invisible, intangible, punchy ghosts that protect their user and come with incredible superpowers, like stopping time, making fiction into reality, or cooking Italian food! God damn, give me that one! And Giorno's gold experience has perhaps the greatest potential of any stand in the series. With just a touch, it can imbue inanimate objects with golden life energy. Can create vaccines for daily poisons? I mean, he would have been great during a pandemic, but that was more of a virus than a poison, right? Because there's a difference. Turning them into any plant or animal in an instant and back again. Giorno uses this with maximum creativity, like disguising a gun as a banana so you accidentally blow your own brains out. A gorilla's worst hey, nightmare. Giorno is, frankly, a super genius when it comes to Gold Experience's ability. Like transforming bullets into flesh to heal the very wounds they made, or changing a brick into a snake that can detect body heat and find a hidden enemy or turning his teeth into a special kind of jellyfish that filters what? out the toxins in the piss he was drinking i thought i was the only one who did that should the object journal gives it's life to be a part of a greater whole like turning a tooth into a fly it will attempt to return to its original source not only that any damage journal's creations receive will be reflected onto the opponent journal can even imbue living things with this same energy this supercharges the target's consciousness causing them to outpace their physical body and leaving them totally helpless to counterattack. It might seem like you got 10 times faster, but you're actually experiencing time at a way slower rate while your body is stuck in the same position. Imagine a Muda to the nuts felt for 20 straight seconds. Forget about it. Especially when you're hitting as hard as Gold Experience. According to the Jojo Veller art book written by the mangaka himself, Gold Experience has a speed rating of A, putting him in the same league as stands like Star Platinum and Silver Chariot, which are faster than light. And although his strength stat is only a C, he can still shatter cars like glass and keep up with A strength stands like Sticky Fingers. Perfect for a merciless stand rush that lasts seven pages long. Daddy. I, I, I apologize. I have been sleeping on JoJo for so long, bro. Just listed out a whole bunch of OP powers. I mean, technically, his ability to transform things and and, and kind of hit us with that, that that one scarecrow off of one piece, right? Where you can reflect damage on other people. That's that's pretty that's pretty crazy. But we you know then we got Joker who can literally defeat omnipotent gods. But if you can, if you can reflect damage on it, okay. Yeah, I'm very interested who's going to win this. Perfect for a merciless stand rush that lasts seven pages long. Daddy Dio must be so proud. With Gold Experience at his side, Giorno joined Passione and rose to challenge its reclusive leader, Diavolo. Wait, 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 wait. Diavolo? You're telling me that Giorno, the son of God, battles the devil, just like Jesus, whose full biblical name is Yeshua, or Joshua, Ben Joseph, Joshua Joseph, Jojo. We're okay, moving on. Okay, Diavolo's okay. goal was to get his hands on a stand arrow. <laughs> and when a stand is pierced by a stand arrow, it evolves. So Joe got it first and transformed Gold Experience into the most broken thing in anime. Gold Experience Requiem. Oh, here we go. Requiem stands change the rules entirely. It's almost like they elevate your stand beyond the need for combat. Gold Experience Requiem can, in short, negate any action taken against it. And okay, so here here, here it is. I did, you know, obviously as we're watching this, he has another form and everything. So this is what puts him on the same level as fighting with uh, with Joker and his persona. Return it to a okay. state of zero, shifting reality back to square one. Let's say I woke up this morning, got myself a gun, and fired it at Giorno. With Gold Experience Requiem, no matter how accurate I am, the shot will always miss because I never fired my gun. That is return to zero. And also a horrific example of gun safety. This applies to any attack made against Requiem, including from Diavolo stand King Crimson, which can infamously skip time, erasing the universe for 10 seconds. And Requiem negated that. It undid time being erased, while time was already erased, which meant there was no time to unerase the erased time and I... Uh... Yeah. That's right, Boomstick. Requiem's ability acts independently of time itself. Sound crazy? Well, Requiem can counter the stand made in heaven, 
which can accelerate time across the whole universe into infinity. So that kind of range of Requiem's ability is actually consistent. It also reduces your willpower to zero, so you can't even fight back! Even your death can be returned to zero. After pummeling Diavolo into pulp, Requiem prevented him from dying, forcing him to relive the experience of being killed over and over in a series of never-ending alternate universes. For eternity. Just when you thought you were out, Requiem pulls you back in. The second you hear that piano start playing, run. And so the helicopter survived having parts of his face removed on par with faster than like, man, are all the stance? I didn't see, I didn't. Now I gotta look at the, the full list of how strong all of these stands are. Cause this is, this is, why? This is like one punch man levels of just OP, you know what I mean? Like, like, why even just, just end it? They had to have just end it. There's no way there was a, a second season after he acquired this power because what? So Giorno took control of Passione and turned it into the peacekeeping social organization Black he Sabbath. always dreamed about. With its streets free of drugs, Italy's youth could rest easy. Their hopes and dreams could be carried into the future on a golden wind. Vento Areo. Wiz, you gotta play that mobile game with all the superheroes and the, the cool art. Next. Oh, are you talking about Marvel Snap? Yeah, time for a go. death battle! I don't, I don't know, go in now. Gold experience! Go, are set! Giorno Giovanna, your heart is twisted. It is ours to take. Soki Fantasmi, my dreams aren't yours to take. Never see it coming. Checkmate. First time. You got the Lucane bicycle kit. Impossible. A second stand. <laughs> you never took the time to understand my gold experience. Objects given life by gold experience desire to return home. Okay, hold on. Before this battle continues, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give it to Giorno. The only reason why is because... No, no, I'm going to give it to Joker. Because of his compatibility as a fighter and his perception, right? Because I feel like Joker is obviously not on par with uh, his persona. Um, But... They're equally, not equally, but they're, they're they're both very, very powerful on their own. So he doesn't necessarily need his persona to fight. Drano doesn't really need it either. But if I was to just pit both of them together without their avatars, I would have Joker coming out on top. So I, I think he would win simply because if they if both their avatars was to nullify each other out and it became a slug fist for fist, Joker would come out on top. Persona creates life. I've got to nullify that. Jack Frost, Ice Age! <laughs> Jack Frost, Ice Age! This Shoko Phantasma is justice. This is Requiem. Or not. Social links. If you die now, I am Joker's gonna kill you again myself. Satanaya! Maybe you 
didn't hear me before. Checkmate. Joker one, but not for the reasons I thought. I mean, I mean, you know, his persona is literally a god. All the personas, yeah, okay. No! <sighs> Giorno never had the makings of a varsity death battle winner. This was an absolutely fascinating matchup and far from an easy call. Joker versus Base Gold experience wasn't close, though. Sure, Giorno's powers threw Joker for a loop, but Joker and his personas were millions of times faster and could take on universe busters. Yeah. And there was no doubt Joker could see Giorno's stand, considering he could spot similar beings like Shadows. Add in the versatility of Joker's hundreds of personas, and Giorno could get quickly overwhelmed. But that's where Requiem came in, and the game changed. With its ability to nullify any action taken against it, even ones that can affect entire universes, Joker's regular arsenal was rendered moot. Remember, Requiem could act independently of time, so Joker wouldn't be able to avoid Requiem's ability. He'd have to beat it outright. Take when the Phantom Thieves faced Maruki. The group couldn't resist the reality warping effects of his powers. He even had an ability that nullified actions against him, similar to Gold Experience Requiem. But Joker still had an ace up his sleeve. While Requiem can reduce your willpower to zero, Joker's social links were able to recharge him. And finally, we have okay. Joker's almighty attacks, which could bypass reality warping defenses like the Omnipotent orb, the perfect counter for Requiem. And this is actually backed up in JoJo. While Requiem only has one appearance in the manga, it did show up in the game Eyes of Heaven. There, it faced off against the world over heaven, which can overwrite reality to overpower any attack, including Requiem's return to zero. Mm. That meant an almighty attack that can bypass reality warping would have the same effect, mm. giving Joker the option he needed to land a killing blow against Requiem's perfect defense. Dio is such a dick, he He's literally ruined his own son's death battle. Jorna was brilliant, but Joker had the versatility, experience, and almighty power for the final blow. Jorna missed his golden opportunity and had a shell of a time. <laughs> hey, okay. Wish. Okay, you know what I said? I said, Jorno missed his golden opportunity and he had a shell of a time. The winner is Joker. Next time on Death Battle. Eggman versus Bowser. Subscribe and join as a member to see. So tell me something. Uh, I, they are done uploading the previous battles only, right? They're doing full episodes now, right? Okay, I just want to make sure. What y'all guys think? I mean, it seems like their answer was was backed up by facts, right? So you can't really argue with that. But there always is some information that maybe they did not cover that maybe some of you guys, super fans or more, you know, the deep information, the stuff that can be covered up that maybe they might have missed. But let me know that down in the comments if you agree with the winner. All right. Dave's out.